What's up guys? Welcome to the Bateman's Bike Company YouTube channel. If the shop behind me looks familiar, it might be because you're one of our 1.4 million TikTok followers. We're excited to start this YouTube channel so we can bring you longer form content on all of the mountain bike topics that you love. We're excited to have you along for the ride. Let's get into it. Today I'm going to show you how we built this 2022 Santa Cruz Mega Tower. Pretty much all bikes ship to your local dealer in boxes like this. As a general rule, the higher end the bike, the more assembly we have to do on our end. These Santa Cruz bikes come to us as a frame, with most of the major components in separate boxes. The first step is installing a seat post, so we have a safe clamping surface to mount the bike into our work stand. This fiber grip compound prevents seizing and allows us to use a lower clamping torque on all of the carbon components. Once the bike's in the stand, I can start removing the packaging and frame protection. Before installing the fork, I'll get my stem, steer tube spacers, and headset bearings all within arm's reach. Here I'm applying a layer of waterproof, carbon safe grease to the headset bearing races. This prevents dirt and water ingress into the bearings and also prevents them from seizing into the frame. After installing my spacers, stem, and top cap, I'll clean off any excess grease from the frame. Now we can move on to mounting the handlebars. It's important to use this fiber grip compound on the stem handlebar interface. This bike uses a lightweight carbon fiber handlebar and the compound helps to minimize the clamping torque necessary to prevent slipping. Finally, I'll torque these faceplate bolts to spec and then clean off any excess compound. With the bars on, we can start mounting the controls. I'll clamp on these brake levers just tight enough so that they don't slip. They'll get torqued to spec later. Once my brake caliper is installed, I'll run the hydraulic line to the appropriate lever. After lubricating the threads on the fitting, we can tighten it into the lever. We'll wipe off the extra grease and slide over this rubber cover. The rear brake install is very similar, except its hydraulic hose runs through the interior of the frame. This foam cable cover helps to dampen any vibration or noise that might come from the brake hose rattling around inside the frame. After routing this hose through the final section of the frame, we can connect it to the lever. Then I'll lay out the parts for the hydraulic fitting and cut the hose to length. With the hose cut, I'll thread in the barb, slide over the rubber gasket, and finally thread on the olive. Same as on the front brake, we'll grease the threads, slide it into the lever, and tighten it down. With the brake hoses connected, we can move on to bleeding the brakes. When we cut down these hoses, it's inevitable that a bit of air was introduced into the system, so it's important that we flush it out before the bike gets ridden. The brakes on this bike use a DOT 5.1 glycol-based brake fluid. This is the same fluid you'd see in most motorcycles and performance off-road apps. After prepping my bleed syringes, I'll connect them to the caliper and lever respectively. Then I can open up the bleed syringes and carefully cycle the brake fluid through the system. This process pushes out any trapped air bubbles from the brake lines and ensures that we have responsive, consistent braking performance. With this process complete, I'll remove the bleed syringes and close up the bleed ports. The one downside of these DOT glycol-based fluids are that they are chemical irritants and they will destroy paint if they're left in contact with it for too long. So after we've closed up our bleed ports, we'll do a really thorough wipe down of the bike with some isopropyl alcohol and clean rags. After reinstalling the brake pads, we can move on to the drivetrain. This bike uses SRAM's Access Wireless Shifting. Once the battery is charged, we'll install it into the derailleur and start the pairing process. Each time one of these access units is paired, it generates its own unique 128-bit encryption key. The encryption system prevents the parts from being affected by any radio interference or other access parts operating in the vicinity. Finally, I can bolt up the derailleur, make sure it's working properly. With the derailleur working, we can install the rear wheel onto the bike. It's pretty common for these bikes to ship to us with slightly warped brake rotors. 
You can hear it rubbing slightly as the wheel spins. Luckily all we have to do is isolate the warped section and bend it back straight. With that all sorted, we can install the chain and tune the gears. In this case, I only needed to remove one link to properly size the chain. I used this chain breaker tool to remove the pin, and then install the SRAM quick link and snap it together with my quick link pliers. I tuned this derailleur off camera, but I'll make another video on that soon. Finally, I can install the front wheel and then drop the bike from the stand. With the bike on the ground, I can finally connect the dropper post. I'll install the actuator cable and then run it through to the remote lever on the handlebar. With the cable connected, I'll cut it to length and cap it off. Finally, I can install the saddle and then make sure this post is working properly. Back up at the cockpit, I'll install the grips and then wrap the cables for a nice clean look. With these steps complete, we can do our final check over and make sure that every fastener and fitting is torqued to spec. The final step before this bike heads to the sales floor is a thorough wipe down to make sure all my greasy fingerprints are removed. So now you know how we build a bike at Bateman's Trail Shop. We really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, we'd really appreciate if you liked, subscribed, and turned on notifications. It really helps us out. We'll see you on the next one.